All right, welcome back to the channel again. This is Coach Evans from Sip the Tally Films, and I'm bringing you my top 10 most important Ravens for the 2021 season. Right now, we're at video number six. Roll the intro. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Uh, if you have not subscribed, make sure you do so. Uh, while you're down there, hit the bell so you can be notified when these videos come out. Uh, if you like what you see, hit the like button too. Uh, likes are very important around these parts, so uh, I appreciate you. Appreciate you if you do that. But let's jump right into the um, countdown, so to speak. I, th I think I sound like a radio DJ on the weekend, but um, let's do our most. Um, I'm sorry, our honorable mentions. Our three honorable mentions: uh, Gus Edwards. Uh, J.K. Dobbins, Mark Andrews, they started the countdown off with the video on those two, those three rather. Number 10 was Jimmy Smith, um, cornerback, going to play an intricate role of doing a bunch of versatile things in the back, you know, in the, on the back end of the defense, whether it be co covering uh, tight ends, uh, covering a specific guy, or even playing some safety. Um, number nine, Rashad Bateman, a uh, rookie receiver with a great skill set from what we're seeing and reading so far. Those of us that uh, cannot be at the practice, we're getting, you know, different reports from different sources, and they're saying good things about um, uh, Rashad Bateman. Um, number eight, Justin Matabike. Again, if you didn't see that video, talked about him having a great last four to five games and being really explosive and eventually taking the place of uh, Calais and maybe – uh, be wheel not him taking the place of both of them but being a guy that can kind of fill in for those guys especially with him being a younger guy this will be his second year um which leads us to number seven which was the last video that i've just put out today marlon humphreys one of the better corners in the league um i don't remember um if i f matter of fact he had eight punches uh eight forced fumbles and i was supposed to look and see if that led the league I haven't done that yet. I forgot. So maybe somebody put that under the video. We can go back and check that out. But um, the way he can cause turnovers is, is whether it be interceptions or uh, knocking the ball out. He didn't have a one interception because a lot of people don't throw at him. He had 11 pass breakups. But he's one of the top guys in the league. There's not very many uh, better than Marlon in the league right now. And the fact that he has Juice Man on the other side of him, that makes him that much better. That also puts a strain on the safeties too, but that's another video. And so we're number six now. Number six on the list is, this is a perfect time to give this video a thumbs up. And while you're down there, make sure you go ahead and click that subscribe button. Thanks. Marquise Hollywood Brown. Marquise Hollywood Brown. So the reason being he's number six on this list is, matter of fact, just, let's just give him the stats first and I'll give you a reason in a minute. Uh, his stats from last year, he played in 16 games, had, um, 100 targets, which led the league. Him and Andrews both had 100 targets. He caught 58 balls for 769 yards, 13.3 yards per catch, eight touchdowns with a long of 70. He had um, one rush for one yard, and that really – they didn't hand the ball off to him. We threw like a bubble or something. I think he orbit motion in the backfield, and we faked the handoff and threw it to him, and he ran, got it and ran out of bounds. But um, it wasn't a handoff rush. So that's where, where – that's his stat line. Now, let's talk about his impact this year. So, we talked about Bateman earlier in this countdown and how Bateman can work intermediate, short, and deep if need be. But what I see Marquise or Hollywood doing is being a straight go guy. And the reason, what I mean by go guy is he can run. Well, he needs to run. I think he needs to run. Post, goals, deep comebacks, deep overs. Anything all, not all, but most of his routes to be impactful, for, and I'm setting some up, to be impactful should be 20, 25, 30 plus yards down the field. The reason I say that is because he's so fast. He's one of the fastest guys in the league. If you don't think that, you're delusional. My thing is, I think if you don't press him off the ball and it's one of those long routes, you're in trouble. And I, I'm not saying he's bad off the press, but if he is, Dub is going to you know improve that you know and give him techniques to to help him win off the ball and I don't think he's bad off the press I just can't recall right off the top of my head but um and not now that I think about it I don't really see him getting pressed a lot in the first two years this is his third year I don't recall him getting jammed up a lot so um that's probably not an issue but if he can run those deeper routes and now a defense has to allocate a safety 
on top of whatever corner is is guarding him, and that safety in his back pedal has to look, has to check and see where Hollywood is, like constantly to make sure that corner's not getting ran by. Or if the safety just knows that the corner's going to get ran by, he just takes off out of there and leaves a, a void in, in the zone or whatnot. If we can get Marquise to do those type of things, the 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 entire offense opens up for everybody because now it's a numbers game. So really, if you got a safety in a corner, kind of focusing, so to speak, on Marquise, now you're playing nine defensively versus ten offensively. And in our offense, you definitely have to play versus ten because Lamar's feet. So you you can't if you bracket Hollywood or if you allocate that safety to make sure he doesn't get beat, get beat deep, you can't double Andrews. You can't kind of have two guys focusing on uh, Bateman or Sammy Watkins. You can't you know stuff the box or, or stuff the yeah stuff the box and and worry about J.K. and Lamar and Gus. So if if Hollywood can get over the top. And he don't even have to catch some of those balls. He just has the threat has to be there. He has to to get. Let me see. That's four to five, maybe not even four to five, maybe two to three deep shots and make the safety. You know, think okay, can't let Hollywood. I got to watch over here. Got to watch Hollywood. He can't let him get behind me. So now he's backpedaling quicker, or he's opening up quicker. So. If a safety's doing that, now he's not really focusing on his run responsibility because he know he got a guy that can blaze over the top. That's going to open up play action. That's going to open up uh, little stuff across the middle for Andrews or Bateman or Sammy, whoever whoever runs that. Or even Borkin if he gets in there and gets a chance. Or Tylen Wallace. So the, if Marquise can, can establish, okay, I'm a go guy. I'm a guy that's going to catch, you know, balls 20, 30, 40, 50 yards down the field. If he can establish that, the rest of the offense is going to be like a domino effect. The run game is going to open up. The intermediate passing game is going to open up. It's 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 crazy how having one guy that can can do that opens up everything else. It's just look at other teams with guys that maybe can do that, and I ain't calling no names. But everything else opens up because you got one guy that you know you cannot let get behind you because he can score on any play, any play, whether he run a. a uh, a sluggo, whether he run a goal, whether he run a deep oval, whether he run a post, whether he run a comeback and you miss the tackle. It's you got a guy that can can score from anywhere because he can outrun pretty much everybody in your defense. That changes the defensive coordinator's game plan. All right, so that's where we at with Marquise. Um, his hundred catches I and mean, his hundred targets. I don't think he's gonna get a hundred targets again this year. I think he'll get anywhere from seventy to eighty. But I think he'll have right around 50 to 60 catches. The biggest jump I think from Hollywood is going to be his, his yards per catch. It's 13-3 last year. It was 12-7 his rookie year. I think that thing's going to push 18 and 19 yards. And if, if that can happen, then we'll start to see those safeties keeping an eye out or checking to make sure that the corner's not getting beat, whether it be cover two uh, or man. There's obviously in cover three. The corner's gonna get out of there anyway. But whether it be cover two, uh, one uh, was a two man, or cover one, or cover zero, but no safety with zero. I don't know why I said that. But the safety's gonna be checking for him. All right. And I don't. If anybody plays us man, you better have two to three great man corners. The reason I say that because, and I'm probably getting on, going on a little tangent right here. If you play us man, and we call any kind of deep shot. Those corners have their back turned chasing the receiver. If your rush or your linemen or linebackers don't keep Lamar in the pocket or allow him to escape in any form or fashion, that's automatically 25, 30, maybe even more yards because your back is running down the field chasing your the guy you're covering. You don't know Lamar's back there, you know, turning on the jet engines. So, but that's a whole nother subject, and I, I get I'm off on a tangent a little bit right here. But number five is Mark. I'm sorry, number six is Marquise Hollywood Brown. I appreciate you guys for coming through. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe. Uh, if you got any comments or you like what I said, you dislike, you want to talk about it, put it in the comment section. I appreciate you guys for rocking with me. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here on Sip and Tally Films with me, Coach Evans. All right, I'm out. Peace. With the